It's Thursday, July 9th, and the time for your Barbados Today Morning News Update. Neglected and disappointed. That's how residents of White Hill St. Andrews say they feel after years of crying out for improved road conditions and running water. Back in November 2014, a large chunk of the main road leading into their community collapsed due to heavy rainfall, and they say the situation has been compounded by constant water outages. Spokeswoman in the community, Khalifa Andrews, believes it was now time for Transport and Works Minister Dr. William Dugid and Minister of Energy and Water Resources Wilfred Abrams to meet with residents on the issue. Another resident, Oswald Jemmett, told Barbados Today the track currently being used by residents was treacherous. It is ridiculous, really, because normally to go through, to penetrate, to go through there is dangerous. Day and night. But now it's rainy season, it can be worse. But it takes a lot to go drive around from here to town and the road. It's deteriorating more on the other side also. Due to burst mains, whenever they got, um, whenever they set put back on the pipe, they get enough some burst mains. I don't know if it's the pressure from the old pipes, the pressure coming through the old pipes again, and the, the road again deteriorated further on down the road. So I don't know if it happens to uh, break down the side, I don't know what, what it's going to be like for us here. Meanwhile, Minister Dugit said measures will be put in place for White Hill. We have a, a, a program for White Hill, and I'll be coming to the public for that very, very shortly. But needless to say, there's a strong program, not only for White Hill, but the whole of the Scotland district. And that be that will be made public very shortly. Now, after waiting more than 40 years, residents of Fruitful Hill St. Andrew now have a proper road they can traverse. Just under a year after personnel from the Ministry of Transport and Works began work to reconstruct the road, residents are now able to access their homes via a new paved surface. And while they are grateful, residents are now calling on the authorities to finish repair the remaining stretch of road. Resident Desmond Marshall tells Barbados today he is hopeful that remedial work to repair the collapsed road will begin soon. Uh, this road is like this here for like for the past 40 or close to 40 somebody years. So they're doing, they're doing the gear bearings down there. A guy get by that with the bees and they just, they just stop from fixing it. Man, I will, let, I will let them to start fixing it now. <laughs> like on this roof, but to be quite honest with you, I don't know. I hope I will have some try and do something about it though. Authorities on Wednesday tracked down and questioned the two young men caught in the act of illegal dumping which was caught on video. The dumping which occurred at the beach at Needham's Point outside the Hilton Hotel was filmed on Sunday and drawn to the attention of the Ministry of Health, the Sanitation Service Authority and Police. SSA spokesman Carl Alf Padmore told Barbados today that after a six-hour investigation, the authorities were able to identify 23-year-old Ross Cobbin and 29-year-old Anthony Brathwaite in the video. The two, he said, expressed remorse for their actions and have agreed to carry out a round of beach cleanups in an apparent bid to avoid criminal prosecution. These young men will be engaged in some serious cleanup around uh, the beaches belonging to the National Conservation Commission. And uh, this will be supervised by personnel from the NCC. Uh, present at that meeting, we had the NCC, uh, we had sanitation, and we have public health. In other news, Barbadians are being urged to invest in the island's first ever renewable energy cooperative, the Barbados Sustainable Energy Cooperative Society Limited. The plea from the president of the Umbrella Barbados Cooperative and Credit Union League Limited came as he addressed the cooperative's inaugural general meeting on Tuesday evening. He revealed that foreign investors were already lining up to take advantage of the country's fledgling industry. If we fail to take action in the new renewable energy space now. There are players regionally and internationally that are on, already on island with the necessary resources to invest in this renewable energy opportunity. 
be mindful that the gains of such investments will take flight from our shores. We cannot afford for this to happen. We must use our collective resources to act now in securing our interests and the interests of our children. By pursuing this opportunity, we are in fact taking action to, to, to secure our wellness as a nation. There's regional and international news after this short break. news from the region. Trinidad and Tobago nationals stranded abroad due to the COVID-19 pandemic have reportedly lashed out, accusing government of playing with their lives. We get more of that story from TV6 News. Three and a half months after being locked out of the place they call home as the government closes borders to safeguard the population from COVID-19, TNT nationals abroad accuse government of playing with their lives. TV6 has been contacted by footballers in El Salvador, groups of hundreds in the United Kingdom, the United States, and individuals from Kuwait. In their latest correspondence, a group from the UK accuses National Security Minister Stuart Young of fooling and brainwashing those stranded. He also accused government of playing a diabolical name with the lives of stranded citizens stuck in the United Kingdom. Health Minister Terence Dialsing today says the government isn't punishing anyone. The Minister of National Security will, as he said on Monday, treat with all these requests based on the policies that he has set out. So there is no diabolical game, but I do understand how this could be interpreted as that. People are traumatized. We understand that. And finally, Johns Hopkins University has reported that more than 3 million people in the U.S. have now tested positive for COVID-19. Over 131,000 deaths have been reported. The latest figures came as the states of California and Texas each reported more than 10,000 new daily cases. More in this report from Reuters TV. In the next two weeks, we are probably going to end up being what New York was two months ago. Dr. Joseph Farron, the chief medical director of United Memorial Medical Center in Houston, says his hospital is running out of beds. We are doing much worse today than what we were two weeks ago. Over the last three weeks, we have admitted more patients than on the prior 10 weeks. It's an urgent problem seen all across Texas. As hospitalizations of patients with the novel coronavirus on Tuesday hit a record high in the state for the eighth day in a row. And Dr. Varon fears the worst is yet to come. Particularly because we had the 4th of July uh, holiday and a lot of people did not listen. A lot of people went out. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbidestoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.